Hello students, today we'll be learning lesson 6 from the science textbook for standard 6. Substances in daily use. So come along then, let's read and understand the lesson. This is a part 3. For a complete lesson, do watch part 1, 2 and 3. You'll get the link in the description box below. This video was made just for you. Do remember to like, share and subscribe. Let's learn about synthetic fibers or threads. That is not natural threads, not natural fibers, but synthetic, that is man-made. Can you tell? Let's reflect on these questions. From which substances in nature can we get threads or fiber? From which substances in nature do you get thread? The thread is also called fiber. From where? Can you think about it? What are clothes made of, of from made from your clothes that you wear? You may be wearing different kinds of clothes, no? From which material are they made of? From time to time, it was first thought that artificial yarn could be produced to meet the clothing needs of an increasing population. That is artificial yarn. That is man-made. Man-made yarn or man-made threads could be produced because there is a growing population. Population is ever increasing and so all people need clothes. So, so much of clothes, how to get it naturally, you know? How much to produce? How much cotton to make? How much other fibers to make? So, therefore, there was a need to produce artificial yarn. Much research and progress has taken place in this field. So, after a lot of research, after a lot of progress, there are many types of artificial yarns that are now made. So, innumerable kinds of synthetic or artificial threads are now available. Innumerable means many, many kinds, many kinds of synthetic that is artificial threads are now available and some of them are nylon, dacron, terlin, terrain, polyester, rayon are the names of various synthetic threads. Do you know? So, here is a little information about how silk is made. Silk is a natural thread or fiber obtained from the cocoons of silk worms. So, now we know that when butterflies lay eggs, these eggs that is called the larvae are then, uh, you know, then become earth, uh, the silk worms. Okay. The silk worms will eat a lot of food and then they will cover themselves and they will make it into a shell. So, that is called a cocoon the shell of the silkworm. So, it will, uh, you know, go inside that for a few weeks and then the butterfly comes out. So, those shells that the worms make and surrounds itself is called a cocoon. And from the, from one cocoon, that is one of these shells, 500 meters to 1300 meters of thread can be obtained. So, if you look at this particular picture at the at the side so you can observe it and it is said that silk was first produced on large scale in china so china was the first producer of silk almost all articles made from natural fibers in the olden days can now be made from synthetic threads so olden days they did not know about synthetic threads threads synthetic means artificial threads man made threads okay but in the olden days they used to use they made it from naturally available materials that is cotton uh, cotton balls or from silk okay or from other grass material okay that is jute and all that so they did not know how to make from synthetic but Nowadays, we have nylon, rayon, terylene, acrylic are all synthetic threads and many articles in our daily use are made from them. So, let's read some of them. So, let's understand about nylon. These threads were invented at the same time in New York and London. So, see, the threads were made at the same time at two places around the world. One in US and the other in England. So, one in New York and the other in London. Therefore, the initials NY, that is NY, that is New York, that uh, for London, of London and LON from London were combined 
to name them as nylon okay so new york ny and london uh, lon so nylon they call the new name nylon isn't it very nice to say nylon threads have a shine and are strong transparent and water resistance so they have a particular shine they can shine they are strong they are transparent also later on color is all is added but first when you make it it is transparent and water resistance that is they are waterproof they are used to manufacture clothes fishing nets ropes etc so so many uses of nylon nowadays now let's read about rayon cotton and wood pulp okay so the pulp of the wood we saw how wood pulp is made wood uh, the pieces of wood are soaked in chemicals so that is how wood pulp we get so cotton and wool pulp is dissolved in chemicals called sodium hydroxide to make a solution okay so in when they take sodium hydroxide and they will take cotton and wood pulp and let it soak they will keep it for some time threads are obtained from this solution with the help of machine so once the solution is ready then with the help of machines they can make threads out of it as these threads have shine and strength they are said to be synthetic silk so these threads are very very shiny and they are very strong also so they are called artificial silk and they appeared to be shining bright like the sun rays hence they were named as rayon rays rays of the sun so we have nylon and then we had rayon because they were looking like the rays of the sun let's read about other artificial threads dacron terrelin terrain so various hydrocarbons obtained from mineral oils are used to make polymer chains okay chains made out of these things okay from hydrocarbons once we we have obtained mineral oils then we get this polymer chains and a solution of such a polymer is pressed through a strainer with fine holes okay so a container with very fine very minute okay very small holes the solution is passed the fibers formed after cooling are long and unbroken threads and these threads are twisted to obtain yarn so you can see some of the things that are made from this polymer different types of chemicals are used to make threads of various properties and these different threads have been named variously as dacron terrelin terrain etc so according to what purpose they are used and what are their properties so these are given names now new words that we learnt today are hydrocarbons they are substances obtained from mineral oil and we also learnt about polymer chains that is long continuous chains formed by small interlinked chemical units we just learnt about the various types of synthetic fibers so now let's reflect on the advantages that is the good points and shortcomings that is the disadvantages or the bad points about using synthetic fibers advantages shortcomings that is disadvantages these fibers can be manufactured on a mass scale that is lot of threads can be made okay we can keep on making as per our needs but it is not so with natural fibers no because cotton has to be grown or silk worms have to be reared so all these things take time but here to make manufacture synthetic yarn synthetic fiber we can make as much or as less we want they cost less also okay as compared to natural fibers they are strong and durable durable means long lasting they can be used for a long time they are very repel oh, sorry they are water repellent that is water resistance so we we can save our material from water when we use this hence 
do not rot rot that is get spoiled or get wet they dry very easily even if you put water into it the they get dried very fast because the water drains out it doesn't soak water they are lightweight so they are not heavy they are lightweight and comfortable to wear so we can wear them uh, during certain seasons that is winter season and all that we can use make use of it as they have a shine they enhance that is they add okay add to the quality of it or beauty of it they enhance the appearance of the wearer so the wearer will look nice as their materials shine clothes made from these threads are wrinkle free and scratch free so clothes that we make from these threads are wrinkle free that is they don't get crumpled okay other cotton and all that we have to iron and we have to straighten it out they get crumpled no but these do not get crumpled and they are scratch free so they can don't have scratch marks also on it now let's read about its disadvantages or shortcomings they are water repellent hence do not absorb sweat sweat from the skin so during summer season we can't use it because they will not soak our sweat our sweat remains with our body so we feel uncomfortable unlike with cotton clothes when we wear cotton clothes the cotton um, of the uh, the clothes will absorb all our sweat and so we feel light and we feel nice continuous use of clothes made from these threads keep the skin moist which can cause skin diseases so continuously if you're wearing this for a long time you know for maybe you know maybe the whole day or maybe sometimes you know if there are people who are working in mines or some other places where they can't change their clothes so they're wearing it for a long time so what happens is uh, the sweat that we our the moisture from our body doesn't get dried up it remains in our bodies okay and so there could be other skin diseases with that synthetic clothes are uncomfortable to wear especially in the summer i already told you that in the summer it doesn't soak the sweat so it becomes very uncomfortable to wear where wherever it is very hot in hot climatic conditions also and in the summer season also synthetic fiber catches fire easily so we have to be very careful when we are wearing these clothes we should be very careful with fire even a small little peck of fire also catches the whole fabric can burn and the person wearing can also be harmed with it can be burnt with it if they catch fire the clothes stick to the skin and causes serious injuries see that so if the clothes catch fire so they stick to the skin okay and so it is very dangerous and these fibers are not decomposed by microorganisms so these are artificial fibers so if they go back into the soil or if we discard them so what will happen is microorganisms cannot eat them or they cannot break them down into natural substances so they are harmful for the nature always remember save trees to save nature save paper to save trees isn't it so if we save trees we can save nature and we can help out by saving trees how is that by saving paper so because we know that papers are made from trees use paper properly and economically economically means make the best use of the paper do not waste paper that is what it means by economically make full use of it and recycle the used paper so make full use of the paper do not waste paper and after it has been used fully give it to your raddi wala that is the recycle okay so that it gets recycled and made into paper again so we can save on trees although there are some disadvantages in using synthetic fibers they can be useful if they are used in the proper way so we have to make use and there we 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 read about the disadvantages we read about the shortcomings of using synthetic fiber but there are disadvantages but if you try to overcome these and use them usefully okay so we can make use of synthetic fiber also in a proper manner they reduce the load on the use of natural resources so natural resources get saved because we can use synthetic resources 
Now let's reflect on what we have learnt today. We use two types of material, natural and man-made. Natural material may be biotic or abiotic, that is, which are materials that we get from living things, that is, animals or plants are called biotic, and those that we get it from uh, other things, that is, uh, soil, air, water, they are called abiotic. Biotic materials are either of plant origin or animal origin, from plants or animals. Rubber, paper, and synthetic fibers are important man-made materials in our daily use. So, we are using rubber, paper, synthetic fibers for our daily use. Man-made materials are obtained by using certain processes. So, we obtain so many man-made materials, isn't it? Some of them we learnt. We learnt about paper, we learnt about rubber, we learnt about synthetic fibers. So, also there are many other materials that as man has made it and we use it for so many of our purposes. Science Watch. While studying science, we do verify whatever we learnt. That is, we try to find out that whatever we are learning, is it true or anything else has, is there in it? But what about others? It is necessary to explain to everybody that there is science behind every phenomena. Let us explain to them what we have learnt and let us act on the basis of the knowledge. So, we should, whatever we have learnt, for those people who are not educated, those people who do not understand things, so we have to try to explain to them everything. Do solve the exercise that is given to you at the end of the lesson. And to check your answers, you can visit our website at www.jkacademypro.com. You'll get the link in the description box below. Do remember to like, share and subscribe. Bye-bye.